sweetie. Come here. Hi. Hi, you. How's it going? Hey, who's that bird? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that bird? I'm inhaling your feathers. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? So we are back with, as promised, a Q&A video about our experience with birds. And you all send us a lot of questions and we picked out a handful of them to answer in this video. And there will be another video in the near future that addresses some more of the questions. So if you asked and we do not address your question in this video, don't Stay despair. <laughs> So the first question we were asked by <laughs> she keeps sink. She likes this shirt. All right. So the first question we've been asked by numerous people is how much did Pearl cost? And Pearl herself, just the bird herself, um, was $180. And she was with a flock of a whole bunch of different cockatiels, and some were $200. Maybe the ones that were gray and white without the yellow were $200, and the ones with the yellow were $180. Anyway, long story short, she was $180. However, Brendan and I were at Petco buying uh, mealworms for his leopard gecko, Pebbles, and they did have cockatiels on sale there, and they were $249. So apparently Petco, at least in Los Angeles, sells cockatiels for $249. And you said they were not hand-raised. No, they were just in... Yeah, they're normal. Just in a, in a cage. Yeah. And so, yeah, we got Pearl at a place called Omar's Exotic Birds in Santa Monica, California. And yeah, one at the time we bought her, at least, it was $180 for a hand raised cockatiel. Yep. So it looks like we got a pretty good deal. Yep. <laughs> so that was just for the bird herself. And then the cage was $120 for the big, Something like, like double cage that we have. The jungle gym was probably $30. And then they were probably half a dozen toys, each ranging from four to seven dollars maybe on the whole with the bird in the cage and all the accoutrements and everything else it was probably in the range of about 350 yeah, dollars like that. or yeah. so yeah. so the second question we were asked is will pillow and pearl be sharing a cage when the quarantine is over and the answer to that is a big fat no um, pillow will remain in his current cage and pearl will remain in her cage they will be in the same space we're going to put pillow's cage um, where it was before back right. up on top of pearl's cage when they're out of the cage and together they'll be sharing the same space but they will completely have their own cages and their own space to go back into right the next question is do your birds bite and the answer to that is Yes and no. Speaking purely from our own personal experience with our own two birds, have we ever been bitten by them ever? Yes. Um, I think I've been bitten by pillow maybe twice where it actually feels like a bite, where it actually kind of hurts. Um, I've been bitten by pearl. I don't know if I've been, but been bitten by pearl in any real way. Were you? I've been bitten by pearl, but it was in an exploratory way. Like she doesn't know how hard to bite sometimes. Mm -hmm. So she could be nibbling on your finger or your ear or something and it just hurts for a second. But it's not like she's attacking you or trying to hurt you. They tend to get overexcited too sometimes when they're playing with a toy or they're biting something like Pearl likes biting paper or her toys. And if you stick your hand close to her while she's doing that, she might just accidentally bite you because she's... Well, she'll get into this kind of a feral mode where she's like, she has something that she really likes and she's kind of nipping and picking at it. And if you put your hands right. in the way, she kind of like, mm, like she wants to just bite, nip, bite anything that's, that's in right. front of her. If you get bit by them uh, and you show a reaction, you say, ow, or you pull your hand away real fast, they learn, they're conditioned to learn that that's how they can get what they want sometimes. So basically, even if it hurts a little bit, a few times when you do get bit, if you show no reaction, they, they learn it doesn't do anything and they stop doing that. Next question is everyone's favorite topic, poop. 
we've been asked numerous times about the poop, how much, how often, all of that stuff. All the answer is a lot and often. A lot. <laughs> Although I will have to say, when we first went to the bird store and we first met Pearl and we were holding her in the store, we hadn't yet decided whether or not we we're gonna buy her and I was just holding her for a long time and walking around. She had the grossest poops. Like she, like literally she would be on my arm and she would poop and it would fall down and hit the floor and it would splatter. Wow. And we actually had some period of time where we were sort of considering, is this really the bird we want to get with these <laughs> nasty, disgusting poops? However, once we got Pearl home and she was here and she was pooping, it was just much more like normal bird poop. And in hindsight, we realized that while she was in the store, she was not yet fully weaned. So she was on a formula diet and that's why she had gross, nasty liquid poops. So keep that in mind if you're getting a very young bird that maybe isn't weaned, um, the poop will change from, obviously, as when their diet changes, the, right. the poop will change. That's not to say that she doesn't poop everywhere and it's not a pain in the butt, right. no pun intended. <laughs> we actually now keep um, on the tables around us a little pile of the paper towels. Kevin has just torn them off into little squares and they are the perfect size for cleaning up a poop. And that's the thing, if you have a bird that's gonna just be around in your house, it's just gonna poop. That's right. just the way it is. Fortunately, like we said, Pearl no longer has these gross liquid poops and the poop, nine times out of 10, it just comes right up and right. it's not a big deal. But it does mean keeping an eye on your birds yes. and- <laughs> And your furniture. Around. Right, because you know, if you leave a bird out for eight to 10 hours a day, just roaming free, you will find them all over the place. So you do have to keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. um, conversely, I've heard of people um, sort of house training their birds, mm -hmm. but I think that takes an extreme amount of, of time, mm -hmm. uh, diligence, and just hard work to get to that point. We also got asked several times about um, how loud cockatiels are and also how much time they spend, you know, it's good to have them out of the cage. And I've heard that cockatiels can be very loud, especially in the morning. Um, we have not experienced that with Pearl yet. I think part of it is because when we come down in the morning, especially since daylight savings time, um, it's still dark. So it's not like she's been awake for a long time and is chirping and chirping and right. where's my flock? Where is everybody? I think we're all kind of waking up at the same time. Right, plus I anticipate when she gets a little bit older, she'll probably make more noise. And also when she and Pillow are together, mm -hmm. when one bird starts chirping, they probably will both start you know, making noise together. Right. time out of the cage. Like with Pillow, we leave the cage door open and Pearl comes and goes as she pleases. Pearl never really goes. She never goes, no. <laughs> she has the option to go, but she right. doesn't go. Pillow um, will come and go from his cage whenever he feels like right. it. Right, he'll spend probably half the day in his cage, half the day out of his cage. Right. Um, but Pearl will be out of the cage. She would be out of the cage 24 seven if we let her. Right. All right, step up. Hi, good evening. Uh, okay, I'm not sure if I'm in frame here, but here we go. Ah! Her claws are really sharp, her, her nails have gotten pretty long, so I think we're gonna need to get them trimmed again real soon. Hi, hi Chirpy! Um, obviously at night we put her in, and we always make sure to have her in uh, when we are eating and when we are cooking, because she, there has been times where she has flown from the living room straight into the kitchen. Ah! And there she goes, ah! Oh, get off the cake. And fortunately, we weren't cooking at the time, but that could obviously potentially right. be very dangerous if we were cooking. Um, so we made a point, the second we need to use the stove or the oven or anything like that, she goes into the cage and is locked in. And as we've said in a past video, um, early on, Brendan was eating at the coffee table out here and she flapped over and landed straight on top. It's happened a couple of times. On right? top of his food, which yeah. obviously is not good for anybody involved. So um, when we eat, she goes in the cage. When we cook, she goes in the cage. But 
for the rest of the time and when we're not home of course and at right. night she goes in the cage but as long as we're home and we're around she's just hanging out so we were asked about the loyalty of budgies and what happens if your budgie gets outside and if they are a loyal bird that's bonded to you if they will fly back in um, we are not obviously zoologists or scientists or you know we can't give a, a, a true scientific answer to this question um, but just from our own personal viewpoint as far as if we had pillow and he got managed to get outside um, we believe that even though he is somewhat bonded to us and he's a very amiable and friendly budgie um, we believe that he would be gone and, and I don't think it would have anything to do with loyalty per se but I think just parakeets just you know their brains are not highly developed I think if they suddenly got outside and found themselves in a tree or in a new environment and suddenly everything looks different and they have no idea what's going on right they're not going to think to turn around and logically try to figure out hey how did i get out here let me go back in this right. little you know especially if they fly any sort of distance locating that little hole of a window where they came out from i think oh that's that's got to be the window back into my house so we think they would just sort of be confused and freak out and fly away and be gone um so again like i just said it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with loyalty um just more about a bird's brain yep. again we're not scientists that's not you know we could be wrong about that but that's kind of what we think we were asked are we going to get a big parrot anytime soon and the answer to that is a resounding no <laughs> i think the size of this apartment does not lend itself to having a very large bird um even just having a, now a parakeet and a cockatiel there's a lot of bird in this apartment right now right. And in addition to that, I would actually feel very nervous about having a large bird like a macaw or a cockatoo or something with a hard beak and having a small child in the apartment. Those fears could be somewhat unfounded. I'm sure there's people out there that have large birds and small children and have had no issues. Just we personally, I, I personally would feel uncomfortable with that, especially having them together in a small space. Right. We've seen those those birds at the bird store and they just have like a giant toy and they're just tearing it apart. Yeah, it and I'm thinking like, yeah. there goes $12 right there. This right, toy they're just, just being tearing torn apart. those toys to pieces. Yeah. So, like it's nothing. <laughs> right. So there are definitely no very large birds in our future, but we're perfectly fine with the small birds and the medium small bird, which who is right now asleep on Kevin's leg. <laughs> And our final question for this video is, where's Pillow? What's going on with Pillow? Um, the only reason we haven't featured Pillow as much as Pearl now is because he's he's still in the quarantine. He's still upstairs. We've got one more week of that. And he's, again, perfectly fine up there. He's in his cage. He's got his food. He's got his TV with the budgie videos on it. He's got his jungle gym. And, um, and I'm up there a lot. And Kevin's up there a lot. But it is just one more week of the quarantine. And then... Pillow will be making his triumphant return. <laughs> and actually the next video after this one should be the the meeting of the two birds uh, next weekend. So then once we get Pillow back down here, we'll have plenty of footage of him in in the regular space with, with Pearl. So I'm actually very interested to see how they sort of Me too. interact. Yeah. It's be kind I'm, of interesting. I'm really excited to see that. So. But as we said in other videos like oh hi, hi there. Um, they definitely have hurt each other mm -hmm. upstairs and downstairs. Heard, not hurt. <laughs> heard. Yeah, yes. heard. Did I say heard? No, but it sound, oh. sounded a little loud. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, no, they've heard each other and um, responded they've responded to each other. Yeah, they've been kind of chirping and calling, and one will chirp and then there'll be a pause, and the other one will chirp and there'll be a pause. So like they've been sort of communicating. And so it should be really interesting to see when they finally get together. So that's it. Like we said at the beginning, we'll be doing more Q&A videos in the future. So keep giving us your questions. We've actually got a list of our next set of questions that will be in the next video. Um, maybe the one after the meeting. I don't know, it'll be in the near future. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.